Twisted X is another one of these brands that is new on the scene under 10 or 20 years that making work boots in an affordable price range like 250 and under. Similar to the other brands that we've reviewed already with quality, with Duradero, with Brunt, and some Carhartt boots. And that the problem with this kind of boot is it's in that sweet spot of price range where you can really deceive your audience to make them think you're, they're buying something that they're not. And that's why in this mock, mock October we're really focusing on some of these brands to really see, show you what you're actually buying for the products that you know, not these super high-end stuff, even though we love doing it and I like seeing all like the $700 boots, but most people are relying on this kind of boot in this price range for their living. So we're gonna cut it in half for our test to really figure out if Twisted X is actually a new brand in the workwear market that's helping people out with some new technologies and little squishy balls on the inside, or is it just another one of these brands trying to capitalize on the working men? Why does nobody sell colorful leather laces? I don't know either. That's why we track down the suppliers of the lace makers of some of the highest quality, most durable boots in the entire world. I was like, hey, what if you made some color laces for us? I want to customize my boots. One of my favorite things about boots and shoes is not just protecting your investment with some kilties, some insoles, and some laces, but it's fun to, to customize them. You know, the leather laces add a little flair, add a little customization. It's the same concept of like wearing a boot, developing that unique patina. Same thing, adding some kilties in, some laces. But like I said, it does protect your investment because if you've had a pair of high quality boots and put some like cotton laces through, that cotton will slowly abrade and wear down that brass eyelet. And that's why in these work boots, you see almost exclusively leather laces, but they all look exactly the same. So that's why we released our Rose Anvil laces because they're trimmable. Uh, leather's better for laces anyways, because it has a little bit of stretch. It breaks in over time. They flex as you move rather than being super tight throughout the day. They don't melt if you're welding or around fires and they just look cooler. So check out our Rose Anvil leather laces below and protect your investment. Add a little character, a little pop of color, a little personalization to your boots. And thank you guys for supporting all these Rose Anvil boot and shoe accessories. It's a big part of what makes all this possible. So thank you guys, check them out below. And like I mentioned, Twisted X is a pretty new brand. They started in 2005 when the Twisted X was founded as a Western wear company, primarily making cowboy boots. And they really focused on trying to make cowboy boots more comfortable, something you could wear and work in, but also live in, take out on the town. It really started going after similar brands like Justin and Ariat because allegedly one of the designers came from Justin and Ariat. But unfortunately by 2008, the company was really close to bankruptcy. They were in a huge financial crisis, which made it even harder to sell their products. But fortunately, an investor friend, Prasad Reddy, called them and asked if he could help save the company in any way. Just a year later, hoping that everything had changed and, and sales were up, they still were not selling any boots. And it was around the summertime, and so Prasad asked some of the salesmen, like, hey, what, what's going on? Why aren't we selling boots? And they said, essentially, it's, it's 100 degrees outside. Nobody's trying to wear these big, heavy boots. Nobody wants to wear that stuff, so nobody's buying it. And so that's when Prasad decided that they were gonna completely pivot the brand, not fully away from Western, but more towards the casual footwear world. But then just two years later, they released their casual driving mock in 2010, and it was this huge wave of success for them. Finally, something had really started taking off. It opened up the company to new markets and really started to establish that brand name. But then over the next eight years, by 2018, sales were up to 70 million. But along with all those changes, Twisted X being a more Western company is a unique brand that really focuses on sustainability, and eco-friendly initiatives because one of the biggest things they do is the company plants a tree for every single pair of shoes it sells and they're striving to have a total carbon neutral footprint and they're also involved in the local philanthropy community but the real question is do they make a good boot it doesn't matter how eco-friendly it is it doesn't matter how cool their history is and what they try to change and how they try to change it if it's a terrible boot none of that matters and so that's what we're going to try to figure out so what is this boot that we're reviewing well the brand is twisted x the style is the men's waterproof distress saddle brown work boots mxc in W04. They weigh one pound, 13 and a half ounces. They retail for $199 and these were made in China. I guarantee you've never seen something that we found inside this boot from China. I guarantee it. And it's it's pretty awesome. Well, it's interesting, right? So how do they position this? Well, the, the men's six inch waterproof nano composite, the safety toe, cell stretch, work boot showcases true comfort and safety. Handcrafted in full grain leather, which is not true. We'll get to that in the leather. This boot features a nano composite safety toe made by weaving together carbon nano tubes to create one of the strongest and lightweight safety toe options available. For stability and comfort, Twisted X has combined our patent pending cell stretch comfort technology blend 85 recycled foam footbed 
and nylon slash glass fiber shank. Twisted X work footwear provides all the comfort and stability and durability that you need to outperform any demanding work environment. And if you do want a pair of these, check them out. Be links in my description. So now I'll start going through these materials. And like I said, they say it's a full grain, but it's not because you can see it's been sanded and buffed, which is a very, very common mistake that brands make. And it's, it's really, it's fairly inconsequential. You know, for work boots, the difference in having an extra half a millimeter of grain is not gonna really impact the boots too much. You know, it's one of those things where I'm like, it's so common that you can't really hold it against a brand too much, but it is technically wrong. And it's always a sign to me that they didn't do enough of their research to even know what the leather was. Um, as for like the, the rest of the quality, you know, it's about two millimeters thick, closer to 1.8, so a little on the thin side, but still within acceptable. Uh, thicknesses and the puncture test did about 84 pounds and usually we cover the waterproof test in the lining section but when we did the waterproof test we noticed that this leather absorbed a lot of the water and it started getting in between that waterproof layer and the outer layer and so you have like some water kind of sloshing around in there it's gonna take forever to dry out because it's kind of vapor locked in there and then if you look at the carbon toe it is a pretty cool looking little carbon toe you can see goodbye yeah, look at all those little it's like a actual carbon fiber weave, which I think is really cool. You know, carbon fiber nanotubes, what does that even mean? Like, is that an industry standard thing? You know, it's, it's hard to say, and it's even harder to test and really see, but you can, you can see there is the fibers in there. And so I'm wondering if those are the nanotubes, is like the lighter bits, and then you've got like that bigger weave over top. These carbon fiber toes are lightweight, they're really durable, they're kind of bulky because you have to build up a lot of material, but not nearly as much as the other composite, non, the non-carbon fiber composite toes. And one other thing about the upper that I almost didn't notice was the eyelets and the speed hooks are plastic, which is strange to me. So I just want to do a quick smash test to see if, I, if they actually break. Let me go grab, okay, I still tase. Uh, cobbling hammer, C.S. Osborne. See if we can just smash it and break it. it. Didn't break. Let's do the sharp side. So they're pretty strong. But that, you know, it's like it's still plastic at the end of the day, you know. But at least they don't just fracture immediately. That's a good sign. Try and get in there and just kind of pry it and see what happens. They definitely, they bend, they don't break. Would I trust plastic eyelets over literally any other material like brass or steel? No. Every one of these brands has to cut corners somewhere. And that's that's the fun of these videos is like, okay, where'd they cut corners? You know, did, did anyone actually do this without cutting corners? They figure out a way to make the boot affordable enough without cutting corners. If you look at the inside, we already, like I mentioned, we already did the waterproof test. It has that classic, well, uh, moisture wicking and like breathable lining that's chevroni. You see it in so many boots and shoes. Prize for how much eco-friendly stuff they push. So far, we haven't really seen anything that's like recycly or maybe maybe that's the plastic eyes. Maybe it's recycled. Because one thing that is eco-friendly is this uh, footbed. This is they call it their Blend 85 recycled footbed foam. It's pretty squishy. You know, it's kind of got a unique consistency. I thought it was going to be really open cell, kind of like open or like ortholite but it's fairly substantial. It's like they mixed in recycled recycled foam with some more like, uh, almost like memory foam type foam. They also say it's antibacterial, but it's, you know, that's how, that's how all these guys are. They just say like everything's antibacterial. And to see how this performed, we did the ball, ball drop test and it did 10 and a half inches. So right in the middle of the pack. So not bad for a uh, recycled insole and it's pretty thick too. And then where we start to get really interesting stuff is the midsole, which is kind of the outsole because it's all one, like, it's almost like a wedge sole that has a heel. They say, even on the side, it's the cell stretch trademark. And the website's not super clear or very helpful about what it is or how it even works. But it just, it, to me, it feels just like a, like I mentioned, like a wedge sole that is more of like a heel. And so we'll see when we get it cut in half, how much of this, all this innovation is actually in there and how much of it's just kind of like for show. But one thing I do like about the outsole is they reinforce some of the spots with a, a actual rubber. You can see here this wear zone at the forefoot and at the heel where you scuff your foot, they've reinforced it with the rubber that's gonna last longer than this really soft foam. This rubber is about 65 Shore. The rest of this foam is around 20 to 30. And so that's where you get the combination of squish and the durability. Bar drop test did six inches, so right in the middle of the pack. And the puncture test did pretty terribly, 51 pounds. And that's about like what you would see from a sneaker. So for a work boot, that really surprised me. I think part of that is because if you look at this welt and how this boot is made, it, you can see there's a welt here. It's double stitch, making it look really extra redundantly tough and strong. But when I pull the upper away, 
it's you can see there's it's just that welt's glued to the upper, which doesn't mean it doesn't always mean that it's not a Goodyear welt and it's just cemented construction. But I'm willing to bet this is not a true Goodyear welt. I think it's just cemented. So let's cut this thing in half. See what's actually going on in the midsole. What is this like cell stretch and all little balls on the inside? Is the is the welt actually real? And another concern I have is uh, I shouldn't do that if you got a shank in your boot. So let's cut them in half. Steel toe. Oh. Oh well. All right, we got them cut in half, and if you're not subscribed, just drag the mouse down, push the little subscribe button. You you know as well as I do, YouTube never shows you what you're subscribed to, and if you don't want to do that, just push the like button, give us a comment. Even if it's a mean comment, it helps. So, let's see what's inside. Look at the balls on this boot. Pretty wild, right? Like I honestly did not expect there to be this much going on the inside, especially for a $200 boot. Because so many times you see these brands be like, sell stretch, it's got all this technology and they, they blow it up on their social media and you actually see it and it's like, well, that wasn't quite true. Where this seems to be very intentional and I, I like the concept, you know, we even dug one of these little, one of these little blue balls out. And if you're gonna have uh, balls in your boot, they might as well be blue. But you've got you've got all these little blue balls in the forefoot that's kind of encapsulated in some foam and then the big, big blue balls in the, the back here. But you can dig them out and you can see they're, they're actually like squishy little like bouncy balls and they do bounce. You know, there's a lot of rebound to them. Bye. You do feel the comfort of this, this extra squish because it's really, really soft. Blue balls come in at about 12 Shore. The rest of the foam surrounds the, the blue balls. It's about 20 Shore 8. And so I like that it, they're at least trying something new, doing something different, where so many brands are just doing the same stuff over and over and over. And so I like that. But there's also some stuff that I'm less excited about, like that shank. It's not really a shank. I don't know if you can even legally call that a shank. And it, obviously it's cut in half, but the whole boot you can see that's the same. Like this is, like this is one finger, okay? That's probably not what you want for a work boot if you want any kind of support. If you're not on ladders, you're not hitting shovels, if you're not doing anything where you need support over your, your arch, you'd probably be fine, you know, because wedge soles don't have, uh, a lot of times don't have a shank, but it is worth considering if you need a boot that has a lot of support in the arch, because this on the ladder is not gonna do you any favors. You'd almost be better off with the shoe. What about the construction? Is it a Goodyear welt? Nope, it's cemented and you know, it's like, it's $200 somewhere you got to find the price savings and there is plenty of cemented boots out there that are decent but let's see if we can tear it apart because the, the brunts are kind of like the the one that I think of when I think of like a, a construction or like a work boot that's uh, cemented and you can tear them apart just like this one actually so that clearly was not very hard for me I probably shouldn't have tore that whole thing off before we recorded everything but that's why I, Cemented boots don't always work well and rarely are worth the money if they're anything more than like 120 bucks. All you're relying on is that, that glue to hold your whole boot together. And in a work boot environment or work environment, I just don't like cemented boots because they, they I could literally tear it apart with my hand. But what about that one Chinese thing that I've never seen in a boot? Because after we cut this in half, you look right in here at the counter, there's a piece of paper in there, okay? And we haven't pulled this out yet, so this is like on screen, trying to pull this out. What in the is this? It's like a handwritten little note on the inside. 
It has like sizing information. It's in uh, Mandarin, I'm assuming. There's like numbers, there's nine and a half, ten and a half. I don't know what any of these symbols or letters or whatever mean. So we're gonna post this and you guys tell me what all this is because why is this on the inside of a boot? I don't think it's a cry for help or like secret Chinese message inside a Twisted X boot saying help me. Weird, right? So now we've seen everything. We've seen all the handwritten notes. Um, what do I think of this boot? Around 200 bucks. I'd have a hard time buying a, a cemented boot for 200 bucks that, I, that you can literally just tear apart. But on this, at the same time, you get some of this technology that you probably wouldn't see in other boots around this price range because maybe they did some of the price savings to be able to afford to do this kind of uh, space age gel ball technology, the blue balls. You know, it's like, what do you, what matters more to you? Do you want like the ultra comfort, all this stuff on underneath your foot without the support of a true shank and plastic eyelets and a cemented construction that could fall apart? Or do you go with a different boot that's a little more traditionally made that you can rely on that maybe doesn't have the waterproof lining that maybe is not as comfortable, it doesn't have like, has an actual break in period versus being comfortable right off the bat. That's the game you're playing with this 175 to 225 boot work boot price range. It's kind of a gamble and that's, that's the whole point of this whole series. This, it's not just saying like, don't buy this, don't buy that, don't buy that. It's like, what is this actual, what does this industry or what does this price segment look like? What are the pros and cons? What do you have to, what do you want to compromise on? What do you have to compromise on? And so now you know with this Twisted X boot, what those compromises are and what the pros and cons are associated with it. And so for me, I'd probably go with a different boot. So then how does this rank on the Mocktober board? Well, I'd put it underneath quality and Duradero. There's some arguments you might wanna make based off personal preference, but that's where I'd put it. So let me know what you guys think in your experience in Twisted X. Do you value that comfort more than the durability? Is that part of your price value equation on how you decide on affordable work boots? And let me know what other affordable work boots you want us to cut in half. And thank you guys for supporting Mocktober. It's so fun. We got some shirts on the way. So that'd be really fun. Check those out. Check out our handmade leather goods. If you want a pair of these, check out the links below. Check out those other videos we talked about with the quality and the Duradero. And thank you guys for everything you do supporting this channel and the Rosambo 2, the collaborations. It's all of what makes this possible to buy a brand new pair of $200 boots several times a week just to destroy to show you what you're actually buying. So thank you guys. See ya. And, and, and. Billy, we did the bar drop test. Fire right in my eye.